again, uh, this is the About Force 11 session. Uh, my name is Todd Carpenter, president of the board of Force 11. Joining me today, we have four other directors from Force 11, Aracho Puebla, Martin Brennan, Emma Ganley, and Simon Worthington. So we're going to give you a little tour of Force 11, uh, how we work, where we've come from, where we're going, a uh, little bit about some of the programs that we have underway, uh, the conference, FISCI, um, the working groups, the, um, the website, uh, some various things that we have underway, and we'll have some time for questions. Again, I would like to highlight um, the generous support of the many organizations, in particular Crossref and the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative as platinum sponsors uh, for the last three days of conference, but also um, ARFA, Dryad, Orvidium, Car uh, Carger, Datasight, uh, SFU, PKP, PeerJ, UASCO, Figshare, uh, Giga Science Press, Press and Frontiers. Uh, thank you all for your sponsorship and your support of Force 11. Uh, from my perspective, the conference has been a tremendous success. And I want to thank each and every one of the people at those organizations for their both financial contributions, but more importantly, their engagement in our community. This is one of my favorite quotes uh, from Steve Jobs, really reflecting on how we got to where we are, has everything to do with the past, and we can't really move forward without understanding the past and how we got here. And that really lays out a, a we're not bound necessarily to our past um, in determining the direction, uh, but it really sets the, the, the path for us. And we can choose many paths uh, moving forward, uh, but really understanding how we got here is, is critical to choosing the right path. And for Force 11, that path began in January of 2011. Uh, and the organization that went into that in-person meeting in San Diego at San Diego State University, uh, which was the Beyond the PDF conference. Uh, this is a picture of the, the many faces that were participating in that conference. Um, I was happy to find there is a YouTube, a series of YouTube videos from that event. Uh, it was brought together uh, by a number of people who wanted to think about and really affect change in how scholarship takes place. And the notion of beyond the PDF was, we have been spending years, uh, decades, even centuries, communicating scientific results on a page um, in a journal article. And the idea was basically, as science has changed in the last several decades, as com scholarly communications have changed, can we do more than simply replicate a page image, that being a PDF? And could we use the value and power of scientific, uh, of digital communications in order to extend the understanding of science, speed the results, uh, speed the process of science through using technological means that are beyond uh, page images. So the, the meeting really brought together a variety of people who had the same vision, the same idea. And the meet, during the meeting, they talked about new formats for communicating scientific results. So not just, uh, you know, page images, but 
how can we leverage digital technology to provide other ways to communicate? Um, what sort of tools for creating, reviewing, assessing, editing, sharing uh, scholarly content existed? And what kind of tools could we build? How do we connect workflows of data, scientific uh, observation gathering, um, and connect that to the papers in a more meaningful way? What sort of metrics needed to exist for success and what kind of business models would really drive uh, continuation of this? And they recognize that there had been a lot of conversations leading up to the Beyond the PDF conference. Uh, a lot of initiatives, uh, you know, dating back into the aughts and even previously, but there was no real coordination. There was no real coordinating body. That then led to a meeting uh, later in 2011 um, in Dogstuhl in Germany. It was a slightly different group, uh, slightly different people, but also centered around the same general ideas of how do we improve the scope and, and distribution of scholarship. And again, they sort of came along with the same general ideas. There are lots of great ideas, uh, but how do we affect large scale change? Um, some of the arguments, some of the conversations that took place at the, uh, uh, the dog stool meeting that, well, I can't give funding for this sort of thing. How do we, you know, funding structures don't support infrastructure. Uh, publishers will never agree to that. Um, the reward system is certainly not set up to recognize publishing of data sets and things along that. And, you know, inevitably, well, ultimately this comes down to my university administration and my deans, my provosts, et cetera. They don't understand what we're talking about and they don't, um, it's not a priority for them. And hopefully through these meetings, we're pulling together the right people, pointing at the right people and saying, okay, well, in order for this to work, you need to, we need to collectively do this. And some of those people were, were in some of these rooms. Out of the Dogstuhl meeting uh, came a manifesto about the future of research communications and e-scholarship um, published by uh, Tim Clark, Phil Bourne, Anita DeVard, Robert Dale, uh, Yvonne Herman, Henry Edwards, and David Schott. Um, it's interesting to reflect on that manifesto and what was included in it and what sort of problems that were perceived in 2011 and kind of reflecting, have we made progress on these? Are these still problems? Um, the, I, from my perspective, the manifesto force has made a tremendous amount of difference. We have made progress in, in every one of these. I wouldn't say we have the answer yet to every one of these, but certainly if you think about existing formats limit and undermine knowledge transfer, and are we sharing things that are, um, that help advance science? Um, just in the last conversation, Annalisa was talking about protocols as one thing that needs to be shared. Uh, research data, Matt Bias was talking about data sets, which are now being shared and being shared at a scale that is significantly different, significantly larger uh, than was the case 10, 10 plus years ago. Business models, there's been a tremendous amount of work in, in looking at um, how do we transition from a subscription-based world to an open access world. And there's been a lot of time spent in the last decade about how do we make this transition work financially. Um, it's important to remember that Force 11 it never was conceived of as an organization of one community against another. It was conceived of as a group that is trying to work together, publishers, libraries, scholars, uh, software providers towards a common goal. And so the idea was not how do we drive publishers out of business, but how do we drive publishers towards a more open access publishing model? And how do we do that successfully so that everyone succeeds? 
which from my perspective is what makes for super a super exciting organization. Um, it is advocacy for the community. It's for everyone. So as I mentioned, we're a community. So coming out of the, these manifestos and these meetings, we've pulled together um, as a community, as a nonprofit organization. That is a community, it's volunteer led. It can, it's, it's probably one of the most diverse organizations in our, in our space. It's not of and for librarians. It's not of and for archivists. It's not of and for publishers. Um, they're all members, they're all contributing. We're all trying to achieve the same goal of changing how and improving how knowledge is created and shared and bringing about a transformation of scholarly communications using effect, effectively using information technology. Um, this is a slide of the transformation of various elements of the scholarly landscape and the information ecosystem that we exist in. Uh, I built this uh, out of work, uh, actually, um, Anita DeVard from Elsevier uh, used this table in a presentation in 2012. Uh, and she went up through the 90s and the 2000s. And uh, last year I used this to, to think not only of where, might two, where, where were we in 2012, but where have we come from since 2012 and where might we go into the 2030s? And it looks at, you know, articles moving from print to HTML to a distributed environment, from monographs going from print to digital versions, um, authoring going from word perfect to Google to, um, you know, where are we headed with AI? Um, presentations being in person to now Zoom, um, you know, 10 years from now, will be will we be donning artificial uh, augmented reality goggles and looking at each other in the, in the same room? Um, what sort of identifiers existed in the 90s in the auths with the growth of ORCID, DataCite, and ROAR, and, and looking forward, will we see the same sort of adoption in BRAID? Again, these are the sorts of things that FORCE is looking at and trying to build and trying to move forward with. So as I mentioned, we are led by teams of volunteers. Um, this is the board of directors. Um, it is a fantastic group. Um, and you know, joining us today, Simon, Marty, Aracha, Emma. Um, but everyone on the board is actively engaged and, and all working towards the same ends. Um, it is also one of the most international boards uh, that I participate on uh, with people from practically every time zone, uh, which, makes, uh, which makes meetings hard, but it, it really shows the breadth of our organization. We have uh, an infrastructure, um, lightweight, but we do have one that starts with a board and we have a, a various set of committees organized around the things that we do. Um, community engagement, which includes things like the website and outreach and uh, uh, conversational sessions that we produce. Uh, we also have a, a resourcing committee because we do need resources, which includes things like fundraising and an events uh, group, which thinks of thing, which runs things like FISCI in the conference um, and the outreach events that we have. And this entire structure uh, supports both the work of, of FORCE. So we have a variety of working groups that have done tremendous work, impactful work over the years on uh, data citation, on software citation and software use, uh, preservation, uh, researcher rights, 
ethics, um, fair principle, issues around the fair principles. Um, and each of these groups is organized and run and, and managed by teams of volunteers, as is everything in force. And this is where the real transformational work happens at force. Um, as, I say, as I keep saying, we are a volunteer organization. Um, you all can participate in this. Matter of fact, I encourage you. I, I, I as strongly as I can, uh, want to rally you to participate in our structure, in our in our committees, on our on our working groups, on our on our participate in the blogs, etc. Share your ideas and try to advance those. Um, the committee sign up form is is on the website. There's also a form for creating a working group. If you have a if if you saw something during the conference that really inspired you, that you'd like to transform our community through through force with, um, that's how you can do it. Um, we also do this through the conference. You're all here. You're all enjoying it. I hope. Um, this is an important thing that we do. One thing I want to highlight as we're looking forward uh, from here, we are looking to co go back to probably an in-person meeting in 20, uh, 2024. And we've put together a, um, a form for people to express their, uh, their interest in helping us organize that. Um, sometime in in 2024 so if you'd like more information you can email us at info at force11.org or you can follow this bit.ly link uh, bit.ly bit host 2024 um, that actually has to be capital all capitalized uh, in order to, to work we also have a fantastic website simon will be talking more about the website later um, there's important elements of that, which include the upstream blog uh, and the various posts that go out on that. And part of this, part of this, um, as with all things force, is is not really us talking to you. It's an open conversation. Uh, it really achieve we really achieve all of the work that we do through contributions of volunteers, um, like the the other directors here, but also. Um, through you, through you listening in. Uh, we welcome your input. We encourage it. We want your involvement um, as well as your feedback. So with that, I am going to stop this presentation and say, uh, pass it now to Aracha. Aracha was involved in the conference and she's gonna share some of her thoughts. Yeah, hello everyone, and thanks, Todd. Um, yes, I thought actually before talking about the conference, I thought I would mention briefly how I became involved a bit more closely with Force 11. I knew of the organization uh, for a while because I, I was working for a publisher for a number of years, and I knew several people within that publisher who were involved at the time. Uh, so I kind of followed it for, for a while and then. I became more involved two, three years ago because I, I was working with another colleague and we wanted to start um, essentially some, some community effort around um, research ethics for data specifically. We knew that there has been a lot of work done by publishers in a number of firms, but we wanted something specifically for data and that would bring more stakeholders together. So we wanted publishers involved, but we didn't want a forum for publishers because we knew that we we needed other people involved, obviously researchers, but librarians who support researchers, institutions, etc. And and we were looking for a place to host this group and again do this call for community input. And actually, Force Eleven gave us the perfect forum, uh, given that as Todd was explaining, it, it spans all of the different perspectives and domains of scholarly communication. So that's how we 
We started the research data ethics, uh, publishing ethics working group, um, which I'll, I'll share a link for. Uh, and it was a fantastic, it has been a fantastic uh, experience, at least for me, it was very easy to set up and it was very easy to bring people into it and according to their availability and expertise, but I think it, it's, a, it's a good way of, again, getting embedded in, uh, in the community and getting connections with others who, again, may not be necessarily in your own domain in terms of what you're doing in scholarly communications, but getting an opportunity to collaborate with them as well. Um, right, but about the conference, we are at the conference right now, so hopefully you have a lot of insight now as to what we have been working on uh, behind the scenes. Uh, it was my second time being in the organizing committee. I think the conference is, is quite an important venue for Force 11 in terms of, again, facilitating those conversations across uh, communities and bringing everyone together and talking about their, again, bringing their specific important angles. One thing that I particularly appreciate in this group is how we try to really make sure that there are opportunities for uh, colleagues in different regions to participate. Again, we may not get things right every time with time, time zones and where we put the sessions, but we try to be very mindful uh, of, of having opportunities for everyone from every continent to, to participate in their own time. Um, as Tal has mentioned, in the same way as other activities for FOSS 11, the organizing committee uh, for the conference is run by uh, volunteers, again, also a very diverse group uh, from, with different expertise and perspectives. Uh, and again, is this something that we try to also bring into the, the program as we build the different activities? Um, I'm also very uh, proud of the fact that there is always an open call for participation. We want the community themselves to tell us what they're working on, what, what they have in their minds, what they're concerned about, and give them an opportunity to share what they are uh, doing. Um, if you're interested, I, I'm sure we'll be happy to have additional people involved for the for the planning for next time. If you say, oh, I didn't see this in the program, how come, you know, it's so important. It's an emerging issue, an emerging concern. Do join the committee and, you know, we want to have these new ideas uh, in terms of topics to cover, formats to use, uh, et cetera. Um, it involves, again, we all contribute to, our, to the degree of our availability and the, the expertise that we bring, but I, I mean, I find it a fun <laughs> activity. Sometimes there is always surprises that come up, but it's a fun thing and the group in the committee uh, is fantastic. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention briefly, it's something that we haven't yet announced, but I wanted to give you a sneak peek into things that may be coming up in the, in the coming weeks from Force 11. Um, and is that we have, um, we are thinking of uh, running a series of uh, events on innovation in publishing. I want here to give credit to the brains and the fantastic uh, people behind this idea uh, who are Dan Goodman from Imperial College London and Ludo Waltman uh, at Leiden uh, University. Um, through other activities and part of my work, we uh, I started having conversations with them and they were saying rightly that this is a very fast moving space. There is a lot of things happening in publishing and in scholarly communications. And even for those of us who are interested in this or may even have a professional role working in it, we, we cannot really keep up. Um, so we thought there may, it may be a good idea to run a few, again, um, uh, events where we could approach certain topics in a targeted fashion um, and, and bring the community together to either keep abreast of what's what's cooking and what's coming up or also provide feedback from their own perspective and say, is this, you know, what, what's going on? Does it address the issues that they see, etc.? cetera? Uh, we are still in the planning stages, but I expect that there will be an event again uh, on a thematic series. So it's one thing per event. Um, Interestingly, one of the topics is publishing beyond the article. Oh my gosh, it's like, you know, going back in time beyond the PDF, we got a stack jumping over it, over the figure that you showed. So essentially a lot of progress, but yeah, a lot of things to be done. I think we're still, for me, the way I would frame it is that the conversation probably has moved from um, how can we do this in the future to here are some ways in which we could approach it and we have to fine tune it and find ways to make them work for everybody. So 
Again, something about yeah, connecting the dots beyond the article, probably something about diamond open access and you know the equity aspect in making sure accessibility to knowledge, um, etc. So more on this uh, in the coming months as we uh, prepare the plan. But the other thing I want to mention before I finish is that we are hoping to have organizations who may be working in those particular areas also involved. So if you're interested in a particular topic or you say, actually, my organization has this cool idea in this in this uh, topic, do reach out because we're happy to partner to make sure that we represent as, as much of what's happening in those uh, spaces as possible. Um, right, and that's it for me. So back to Todo, perhaps Marty. <laughs> I'll pass it over to Marty. Talk us, talk us through Fisky. Great. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Marty Brennan. I'm the Scholarly Communication Education Librarian at UCLA. And since uh, 2019, I've been uh, the co-director for a few years and uh, the director now for the last few years of FISCI, the Force 11 Scalcom Institute. Um, it started in 2017 at University of California, San Diego. Uh, it was just a um, the idea of a few people sitting around a conference table saying, you know, what can we do uh, with force and the resources of force? And one of the things was an educational opportunity. Uh, let's get people within the force community to step forward and uh, offer courses on uh, areas that they are specialized in uh, to kind of bring up the skills of people within the force 11 community. Um, it started with a group of about 100 people. Uh, in San Diego. Um, and uh, uh, after two years there, uh, 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 there was some softening of institutional support at San Diego. And I sniffed that out and said, hey, uh, why don't you bring it over to UCLA, where I know it will be uh, robustly supported. Uh, I made a proposal and um, uh, and it went through. And ever since then, uh, there's been a partnership with the UCLA Library uh, to produce Fisky. Um, uh, we had a bigger crowd in 2019 than either the two events in San Diego. We were excited about 2020. Uh, and then uh, the pandemic happened. And ever since then, we've been doing the conference virtually, uh, which has been very successful. Uh, we've been pulling people together from around the world. Um, for the last three years, we've had um, people from more than 40 countries on all six continents uh, appear at the Institute. Um, uh, we started off with a bit too many courses. We had something like 22 courses the first time we went through. We did it two weeks long, and that kind of chewed everybody up. So we've we've uh, uh, we've consolidated it for the last few years, and now it's one week. We have 14 courses. Um, and let me put a link to those 14 courses um, because um, it now appears on our website. And um, registration is now open for this year, which is happening July 31st um, through August 4th. Um, these 14 courses are really the core of what uh, Fisky is all about. It's seven courses that are repeated from last year because they were very successful and um, and well received by the students, and seven new courses that were pulled out by uh, a call for courses uh, out to the Force Eleven community and beyond. By the way, uh, this isn't just limited to the people within Force. We you know we put it out in a wider scope, and so we do have people from beyond Force that are teaching these things too. Lots of topics that are listed here. Um, uh, lots with a global focus, um, uh, a repeat class on FAIR principles, uh, a couple of classes that focus on AI, um, lots of things on open access journals, um, catalyzing team science, analyzing your institution's publishing output, um, uh, applying basics in marketing and communications to advance open research. Uh, I'd be shocked if you didn't look through the 14 courses and see one course that went, ooh, that sounds interesting. So I, I challenge all of you to go take a look um, and see if uh, perhaps uh, one of these courses would be good for you. Uh, we're in partnership with UCLA Library, so our, our, our costs are low. We're able to keep costs for the Institute 
uh, pretty low. But uh, for those of you that are uh, reaching us from the global south, where things uh, like $75 for a class can be a prohibitive cost, uh, we do have a very generous uh, scholarship program uh, and uh, guarantee at least 100 seats at Fiskey for people from the global south that uh, don't have the funds uh, to pay for it themselves. Uh, we really do like to bring in that global community. One of the strengths of Fiskey is in that classroom that you're in, you are surrounded by people from around the world. And so as you're addressing these issues, you're hearing ideas that come from different um, uh, global regions and different disciplines um, to, attach, to attack these issues. Uh, that's another aspect too, in terms of disciplines, uh, although about 50% of attendees are um, librarians, mostly SCALCOM librarians, the other 50% are a, um, a, a spread out of different uh, disciplines, uh, faculty, researchers, administrators, publishers. Uh, so we do have a diverse group in these uh, classes to look at these issues. But that's just the courses. Then there are also plenary events. We have um, something on semantic climate as an, our opening keynote plenary this year, which will feed into a hackathon that starts on the Monday of the the Institute and runs through the full week. Um, that will give us an opportunity for people to work together outside of the courses. Um, there are many other more casual uh, um, community events that happen throughout the week. And then and on Friday, the closing plenary will be a, uh, uh, a panel on uh, AI, where it is, uh, how it affects us in SCALCOM, uh, what, uh, what can we see in the future about AI? Um, so we are <clears throat> pretty excited. Um, let's see, Simon, you shared a link. I'm not sure. Oh yes, that's the 1917 <laughs> uh, University of, of California, San Diego conference, sorry. So, um, the Beyond the PDF conference. So I, I'm really excited to uh, announce that registration has opened this week. Uh, so we invite everybody. I see in this window, there's at least one person who's already registered. I see a couple of, of people who are um, uh, planners of Fisky that have uh, shown up today too. Uh, but uh, Beyond that, I see a lot of names that I don't recognize, and so I'm excited to get all of you to take a look at the courses, consider joining us at Fisky and expanding the Fisky community a little bit. Um, what people really like about Fisky is, again, the, the diverse group that comes together to address these issues, and they hear um, ideas and uh, approaches to these ideas uh, from uh, different perspectives than they've ever seen before. So uh, consider that. Uh, consider also that we do have a bit of a, a gap in a couple of the planning committees. We have something called the Participant Experience Committee, which plans things like coffee hours, um, uh, battle decks, which is a, uh, a really fun event of uh, people uh, uh, improving over 10 slides that they've never seen before, and they have to give a presentation as if uh, they know exactly what ties together these 10 slides that have nothing to do with each other. Uh, it can be wild and wacky and goofy, but um, th that's a fun event that happens. Um, there's uh, uh, lightning talks that happen as well. Uh, you know, because we're compressed down to one week, we don't have as much as we've had in the past, but uh, there's still lots of stuff for people to get together and talk outside of courses as well. So it's a really jammed and fun week. It's really quite worth the, the small amount of money that we're charging, and we really want people to get involved. And if you want to be a part of the planning of it, just uh, you can send me an email. I'll put that in chat in just a second, and I'd be happy to get you connected to one of the planning committees. Um, but Fisky uh, planning happens all year. We were just uh, picked courses throughout the uh, early uh, winter, January, February months. 
um, and uh, firmed everything up, uh, got everything put together and announced registration this week. So it's a great moment for us within the Fiskey Planning Group. And um, we look forward to seeing numbers spike above last year, uh, fingers crossed. And uh, in any case, we look forward to seeing you all late July, early August for Fiskey. So uh, any questions from anyone? my email in the chat. If you're interested in being part of Fiske in, in any fashion, not just the, the participant experience committee, which is a little thin right now, but um, other areas we could use help in terms of technical support and, and things like that. So um, just send me an email at that address there if you're interested. And that's it for me. So I'll turn it back over to you, Todd. Uh, yeah, and as someone who's participated in Fisky before, it is a great experience, and I uh, so appreciate all of the effort that uh, Marty and his team uh, put into putting the great a great week of uh, events together. So, uh, cannot encourage you more to to engage in that. And I'll pass it next to Emma. Thank you. Hi. I'm going to go back to sharing quickly the sponsor slide. Oh, if I can get to it, there's too many Zoom windows open on my on my laptop. Uh, so I um, have been on the board of directors with Force for two or three years now. I lose track uh, and found myself as lead of the fundraising committee in my capacity. So I'm quite amused earlier at the comment about, you know, we managed to leverage our expertise because this isn't really an area that I had a lot of expertise in previously. But what's wonderful about Force is it actually gives you the opportunity to get experience in some other areas too. Um, and as has been previously mentioned many times, you know, we are all volunteers with other day jobs. So uh, doing this is on the side. Uh, and the support, therefore, from all of the sponsors is immense because although as volunteers, you know, we are not receiving any any compensation, there is still uh, administrative costs behind the scenes that go into making sure Force continues as an organization and can put on events like the conference and Fisky. Uh, I would note, though, that I think Force really models the I in FAIR as an interoperable entity and that all of the partnerships and communities that we work with and partner with uh, are absolutely critical to making sure that we continue running and can continue running and can put on events and organize things. So UCLA Library for Fisky, that's immense for us. That's amazing. We wouldn't be able to have Fisky without that partnership. Uh, similarly, looking for host organizations for conferences, both next year and going forward, as Todd mentioned earlier, uh, we rely on those kinds of partnerships along the way. Uh, as for other things like beyond sponsorship, um, we have had support in the past from, obviously in recent times, great support from Crossref, ongoing support via grants from Chan Zuckerberg who keep uh, supporting us. And in the past, we've had a lot of support from Sloan and Gates. And these model more as partnerships than necessarily sponsorship um, and are often built upon grants. And so we, you know, we're really, really keen to continue to forge these, these partnership um, opportunities and, and create new opportunities for the entire community. And so would just urge anyone out there who may have an inkling of an idea about how we might be able to partner with their organization, either formally or informally to get in touch with us. And or if you're interested in helping out in fundraising or on any of the other committees to sign up, whether you actually have expertise in that area or not, uh, we will appreciate extra hands on deck and support to move things forward. Um, the ongoing conferences we hope will be hybrid so that, you know, ideally we'll still continue to serve other time zones beyond <laughs> just the location where it happens. Um, but all of these things will require a lot of logistics and planning and oversight. So 
support welcomed via any partnerships that can come through. Um, and I think the um, other thing to say that we can offer, sorry, is around the working groups where people can sign up and come to us if they can see they want to bring together a group of disparate people from different organizations to try and move something forward. So for example, next steps for ProMap from the previous presentation and actually seeing more implementation built onto recommendations might be an ideal place for a working group. And what's perhaps not appreciated often is that um, we can offer a lot of support to those working groups um, as needed, both for infrastructure or even if they seek grant support, administration of grants. And so there are other ways that we can support the community as an organization through which um, infrastructure can be um, funneled to bring together disparate groups. So I hope that many people here might feel invigorated to uh, reach out, um, contact us with ideas, think about any opportunities for partnerships. Um, we would like to keep building that interoperability within the community between all of these diverse organizations. I think it's absolutely unique in the way that we bring together uh, so many different stakeholders in this really interesting and burgeoning arena around research, communication, publishing, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that is all I will say. Um, hand back to Todd. And our last uh, board member who's gonna speak today is Simon. Great, thank you, Todd. And thanks, uh, Emma and Marty. Uh, I, yeah, I'll just share you a few um, uh, a few web pages uh, and and the like. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm essentially I, I've I've ended up um, heading the website committee and a bit like um, Emma saying about Todd saying oh you come along with your mix of your specialisations. Uh, I actually came along because I mean one I liked force. So I thought I thought this, this is an exciting place and to me it, it's kind of like a bit of a kind of like hard to pin down thing about force um like why is it so interesting and i think it's because you, you there was a kind of um horizontality you could meet these people doing really interesting projects and it is a very diverse um community so it's always very hard to pin that down like what what is it about force but but i joined um with an interest in actually the working groups but when i joined my expertise was needed because Hmm, we had this website and it had had lots of people contributing to it over 10 years and it was a big ball of stuff and somebody needed to sort it out so yeah I ended up there with the web committee uh which you know which is which is great and and I uh you know I'm really glad to put in my time and support to help it come through so on the web committee um I work with Mandy Taha of the Library of Alexandria in Egypt um, and I think what I want to take you through today is two aspects around um, the website is like essentially kind of, you know, materially, what have we done? And that has really been about a migration and about introducing modern working methods of UX, DevOps, versioning and the like. Um, but also to kind of point to a couple of um, issues that are there in terms of um, Things that we I, I've kind of spotted that are kind of bigger than than what we can really deal with at Force, and one is around working groups and how do you like what are the tool sets for managing working groups? And I see kind of quite a blind spot there in terms of in the wider community, you know, from the commercial sector and from open source projects, how working groups are supported technically and how they are seen as like a unit of um, uh, scholarly output. Uh, they're not mapped very well, I don't think, and the tools for them there, maybe domain specific do work. So we have some issues there. And these are kind of two things essentially on our, um, well, on the roadmap for the, yeah, for the website, for the web committee over 2023. And the other one is about membership. Force 11 has a membership of now 3,880, a nice round number. Uh, and it's like, how can we engage with that community, do things with them. At the moment, we can only really do basic record keeping of that membership. We don't have the ability to act on it. So it's these kind of two things that I want to put out there. Um, um, yeah, so what I've got on screen here is really, well, it's just a 
bit of a view into the back end of, of the web analytics, but to give you uh, on Google, to give you an idea of like, a, like how much you'll be serving out there. So we have not like, this is a city view, as you can see, you know, we, we, we have a good global access spread. And this is an annual view where there are, there are you know, Google sees it as 94,000 users uh, around the world over a, over a year period. You know, so there's a good, there's a good um, impact on, yeah, and through the website and what we're doing. Um, uh, and like, like, like uh, Modi says, and like Emma says, it, there's competition for recruitment. So come and join our committee. Uh, we'd welcome you there. Um, but I would um, quickly before talking about working groups and the like, I mean, the committee is, is, is one example of where we've look to make things um we, we've been making changes to make things visible so beforehand the committees might have been buried down in the working groups and they weren't um surfaced upon uh, to to the community so it's kind of sometimes kind of quite straightforward about making things which are there and part of force clear and visible ways that people can engage in them um so yeah um, you know, it can be these simple um, things. And um, back to the groups, um, this is, I suppose there's kind of been like two areas really that, um, you know, FORCE has the conference, uh, uh, it has, has Fisky, but the working groups, as, as Todd has pointed out, have been a, a very big part of, I mean, you see the biggest hits on the website are around fair data and software citation as those were working groups that force supports, but technically supporting working groups is, is difficult. Um, the, the platforms for doing it, uh, 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 yeah, all have a lot of problems and incompatibilities. So like, for example, we, I, I put in place uh, as a set of technology that Humanities Commons had put it, uh, were using, and, but we have a legacy of like using Google groups. Um, and there's all, yeah, the, these, these two things just don't mix. So we kind of need to do something uh, different or, or uh, in addition uh, on, on force. And I'm kind of thinking about activity pub and the like of, of, uh, to deal with this kind of issue of like, how can you have a working group when you accept that, well, when it is the case that people work across different platforms and different, different places uh, and have something a bit, um, yeah, platform independent. Um, and the, the second part, um, as I said, um, is really to do with membership. Um, uh, we want to be able to, uh, uh, yeah, I suppose kind of, yeah, give credit, for example, to people when they join uh, groups, uh, know that they're on groups and be able to message them. And, and yeah, and, and involve that community. Um, so we've tried, uh, 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 a CRM um, uh, implementation with Civi CRM, but that was just there were just incompatibilities between um, uh, WordPress and um, uh, yeah, and Civi CRM itself. So had to had to drop that. So that that's on our plate for 2023. 20, um, and what else do I want to say here? Um, yeah, I think what Todd hadn't mentioned was really uh, Todd came on board as the president in 2022, part of 2022. Um, I can't remember the exact part, but uh, really, I think what Todd has brought on board as an idea for how Force is organizing itself um, is to look at how we can, different ways that people can, we can bring in that community uh, that is around force. And that means in terms of joining the, the committees and the like. So the website is kind of like, is a place where we try to make that, try to make that happen. Uh, and before that, uh, John Shodaki uh, had done a lot of kind of rationalization, rationalization on our, on our governance. And Violeta um, Illich had done work on, um, uh, yeah, I suppose the, the organizational development. So we've had these phases and I think it's, um, yeah, um, we're, we're now at a place where uh, I think we're kind of, we're ready to put some more work and support back into 
into groups, uh, into membership. Uh, we have these, uh, you know, the conference and Fisky run really well, but it's these two areas where we're going to be working on next. Um, I think I'll quickly kind of wrap up. Um, yeah, and, and you know, really to say, um, you know, if you if you have if you if you have any skills or want to kind of develop uh, your skills or ideas or, or contribute to to force the web committees here. But it is also, I think I will put out a post about these kind of areas of development around um, working groups, around membership, because I think there are these are problems that other organizations um, undoubtedly face as well. And they're not something we can really deal with, um, you know, as a small volunteer group um, within force. Uh, there's something that we, we put together what we can, but these are kind of, yeah, uh, bigger, bigger questions. So I think it's the kind of thing of, um, um, yeah, part looking for volunteers, but part also just about sharing ideas and seeing what kind of cooperation or partnerships, uh, um, yeah, can interest people. So I'll wrap up there. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Uh, and thank you, Marty, Aracha, Emma. Uh, we have some time for questions. If anyone has any questions or comments, uh, anything you'd like to share, we'd love to hear that. You can either unmute or you can type something into the chat. We didn't, I didn't set up a poll for this, but maybe we could do this through the reactions button. Um, how many people on this, um, on this call are already participating in a force committee or a force group? Just raise your hand. Four, five. Simon, Emma, I know that <laughs> you count too. Um, yeah, so only about 20%-ish. <laughs> um, and I also note that some people, uh, just looking through the list, I know there's some people in there who uh, who are already participating, who didn't raise their hands, but fine. Um, there are lots of ways in which, oh, yes, Heather? Are you raising your hand or you'd like to speak? I was trying to figure out how to raise my hand, so. <laughs> um, one important distinction, and I put this in the chat, but it's worth mentioning in the recording. Um, in the Force 11 terminology, uh, we have groups which are community-led efforts to try and change things in scholarly communications, like data citations, like software ethics, et cetera. And then there are committees, and committees work on Force 11 activities, like fundraising, like the website, like the conference, like FISCI. Um, we needed a terminology since they're all volunteers and they're all groups. Uh, we needed to establish a terminology for what those things were and how they're slightly different uh, because they are slightly different. I put into the chat links to uh, how you can create a group. So if you have a great idea and you think the force is a, a good community to help advance that idea. Um, and I also put in the a link to um, how you can volunteer uh, for a force committee um, and help Simon. Um, and one last thing, and I think uh, Simon and Emma both mentioned this, uh, volunteering for an organization like force gives you the opportunity to maybe learn some skills. Uh, maybe you'd like to 
move into a new career or a new direction um, in your institution. And FORCE gives you the opportunity to say, oh, well, maybe I want to try out communications or marketing or web development. Um, maybe I'm like dabbling on the side and trying to learn some of those skills. Um, and this is an opportunity. This is a place where um, you can you can get your get get your hands in um, and be involved in in things like that. So there is uh, a tangible benefit um, for engaging in that way. So I don't see any questions. Hopefully we have um, provided some background and information about FORCE, um, our activities. Uh, hopefully we've piqued your interest about some of the things that we're doing uh, behind the scenes, uh, peek behind the curtain, so to speak. Um, and also maybe hopefully uh, taught you something about how FORCE 11 achieves uh, some of the things that we do. So with that, we will draw this hour to a close. Uh, thank you all for participating in the conference, for joining us for this session. Uh, thank you to uh, Marty, Simon, Emma, Aracha. Uh, I see Danny um, hovering in the background um, and tweeting away. Hi, Danny. <laughs> uh, we are, yes, uh, the, this recording, as will all other recordings from the conference, will be posted uh, to s probably SCED, uh, but also eventually to the Force 11 YouTube channel. So they'll be available uh, to the wider community. So thanks, everyone. Um, enjoy the, uh, the rest of the day. Uh, the FORCE conference will resume at 11.30 Eastern, which is about three and a half hours from now. I th think I've got that correct at 15.30 UTC. Um, your time zone will vary. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.